Hey guys, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you've been shooting weddings for a little while now and most of your referrals are probably coming from um, Facebook, word of mouth, weddings you've already done, Instagram, YouTube, whatever. Uh, you're seeing that a lot of your competition are on sites like Wedding Wire and The Knot. And the question is, is it worth implementing into your business, especially for the price tag? I've been using these services since 2015 on and off, so I can honestly say that I, I think I can give you a really good review on whether it's worth implementing into your business. So yeah, let's do that. Okay, first of all, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that because I'm gonna be putting out a lot more content about um, owning a creative business and how you can turn your vision into a profitable business. I've been doing it for eight to 10 years now and I'm just now putting the information out there so I've got a lot more videos to come. So make sure you subscribe. So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you already know what Wedding Wire and The Knot is, but just to give you a brief summary, it is basically a, um, a vendor to customer platform where brides and grooms and wedding planners can find vendors, whether that be photographers, videographers, florists, venues, um, officiants, uh, violin players, I mean, pretty much anything you can think of. You create a profile, brides and grooms go in there, they create a profile, they can browse through all the different vendors in their area, choose, message them. Uh, actually, I think you can make payments through there maybe. I'm not sure if you can do that. I don't do that, but basically it's a bridge between you and the customer. Now, I first started my journey with Wedding Wire only back in 2015, and uh, I basically reached out to them and wanted to get my business on their site, and they gladly took my money. Uh, I don't have a lot of recollection on how many things I booked back then. I don't think it was a lot. Maybe I booked three or four weddings in a year and I ended my subscription then. I came back to Wedding Wire when Wedding Wire and The Knot joined as a company uh, in 2021, which was last year. And the reason that I think I came back was because um, all my competition was on there and I just... I wanted to reach more people, I wanted to reach more brides, and I said, you know what, I'll give this a shot again, because they were reaching out to me asking if I wanted to come back. Uh, and I'm gonna go into a little bit of strategy on that. I didn't just jump in, you know, hey, you wanna be on our site again? Yes, here's the money, I didn't do that. I actually spent six weeks negotiating with uh, one of their representatives to get the lowest price possible. So when they first approached me, they wanted, I think it was like $300 a month to be uh, a featured or spotlight um, member and the way that works is basically the spotlight is the number one um, person that is on the listing so if you're a videographer and somebody search videographer Hattiesburg Mississippi the spotlight person is going to come up first then after that they have featured which usually there's one or two featured uh, and they'll come up next and they'll say featured I think the spotlight has like a little star on it or something and then everybody else who pays and is in it and doesn't pay for those two tiers is just listed after that. I don't know if it's alphabetical or randomized. It's probably random. Um, but they wanted about $300 a month. I think that was for the featured. I think that was for the featured. I think it was like 500 or something for the spotlight. Maybe it's worth it. Maybe it's not. I ended up getting a featured spot and I spent six weeks going back and forth and back and forth with them on the price. And I actually got it down to $149 a month. So if I were you guys, I wouldn't just join um, automatically. I would, I would show interest, but show enough interest that they keep reaching back out to you because they'll always reach back and say, hey, my manager said we could do like a 15% off thing now if you sign up. They're trying to get the sale and they want the max sale just like anybody else. Um, but there is, a, there is a floor that they will take. And it just took due diligence. I wasn't hurting for clients or anything, so I took my time with it and I was able to get that price. Okay, so I'm set up now. I've got my storefront set up. Basically, you have basically a profile page on each site. Um, so it's one company, but they still have two separate sites, which is a little confusing, a little bit of a hassle, um, but you set up two separate storefronts. So basically, you can put your photography on there, your videos, a bio, um, they have a spot there where they can message you. You can also add a PDF with your prices. 
and I set all that good stuff up and within a, within a day or two and I started getting leads pretty much immediately. Um, the leads start coming in and you know, as you would, you want to message back very, very quickly. And that goes for any platform, whether it's your website, Facebook, or the wedding wire and the knot. So I message back very, very quickly. The one thing that concerned me was in the first week or two, I probably had 25 leads. Maybe I had 20 leads. And I was messaging these people back very quickly. Um, I wasn't getting any return message, whether it was... Hey, thanks for thanks for messaging us back so quickly. Or we'll take a look at these prices and get back to you. I was getting absolutely nothing, and so that that's a little concerning. Um, the second thing was when these people messaged me. I know there are built-in responses or built-in messages you can send, but almost every single one of them said the same thing, and it was like, "Hey, we have a wedding coming up this date. This many people." Um, look forward to hearing from you and we need prices. I don't know. It was like a, it was like an automated message. And I'll tell you from experience that if someone wants to book you, it doesn't matter if it's a wedding or commercial or anything, they're not going to opt to send a automated message. They're, they're probably just going to put a message from scratch. Like, Hey, I'm, I'm having this wedding here. I really like this video you did or this or whatever. It's going to, it's going to be real and personable. So I'm not trying to say that the wedding wire and the knot falsely sends leads. I don't know. I don't know because these leads come in and they're just very strange because they're worded strangely. They're, some of them are worded exactly the same and then they never reply back. So wedding wire, the knot, if you're watching this, feel free to comment. Um, I'm just being transparent with my experience. I'm not saying that you know these are false leads, but they definitely seem kind of fishy and it might be something you want to look into and address. Okay, so fast forward, August 2022, I've been in this for nine months again, and I've probably got 100 leads between the two platforms, The Knot and Wedding Wire. Um, a lot of those leads now are, are real. I can tell they're real because I'm actually having conversations with these people. And to date, I have booked one wedding. One wedding, and I have three months to go on my contract. Um, the one good thing about these leads, I'm not sure about the ones that aren't real or maybe aren't real, but the good thing about the ones that are is you get their actual email. So personally, I want, I, I think it's almost worth it. Um, well, we're not going to get into whether it's worth it or not, but it might be worth it for the emails that you're going to be able to gather because you get all these emails and then you can export them as a Excel file or CVS file and then import them into your email marketing software, whatever you use, and retarget those people with deals and start having conversations with them off the platform. That's what I prefer to do. I know Wedding Wire and the Knot frown upon that. But I just find that more beneficial. It just feels more personable. I book more things when I'm going through my website and my um, Facebook. So when I can actually get their email and put them on a list of like what potential wedding clients, it always works out better. So, you know, for however much I paid for the year, I got, you know, 110 emails of, uh, of brides, potential brides. Sorry, there's a fly in here. <laughs> I need to get him out. Uh, it, it might have been worth it for that, but like I said, I've only booked one wedding, so, you know, the one wedding has basically paid for my subscription, so it's really hard to tell right now if it's really worth it, but that's kind of what's happened in the first nine months of this second round of being with these two platforms. All right, so the workflow with these platforms is a pain in the ass. I'm just going to say that, and I've talked to them about it. It's two sites built into one, so you have to build your storefronts separately. Pain in the ass. So when you want to upload a video, you have to upload it to The Knot, and you have to upload it to Wedding Wire. I really hate that. And then the inboxes are separate. Basically, it's still two separate sites. I don't really understand with the coding and the technology and the, the tech why these developers can't just combine the inbox. Really just combine the two sites. I really just don't understand it. I'm sure there's a logical reason. There's probably a monetary reason, like it's gonna cost them X amount of dollars to do that, and maybe they're waiting to do that, or they've got so many subscribers that it really doesn't matter, people are still using it, so, you know, screw it. 
But as a customer, I would say combine those two things because sometimes I would miss leads on the knot because wedding wire is like the main one I would open up. And I mean, you know, like, yeah, I check them both, but sometimes it's, it's hard. Sometimes I'm just checking this one and I get a lead. So I start messaging them and I forget to check the knot because uh, what other platform are you checking two inboxes on? I mean, come on. But anyway, the, the, the workflow of that really sucks. Like I said, I only booked one wedding off of it in this nine month period and I'm gonna tell you why. So I've been doing weddings for eight to 10 years, maybe maybe eight to nine years. I don't think it's quite been 10 years. Um, but I shot my first wedding back in 2013, 2012 or something like that. Um, but anyway, so over time, like you would want, you know, you're raising the value of your product, therefore you're raising your prices, right? So my prices are probably amongst the highest in my area. Um, in fact, I might just be the highest priced person in my area, um, but that's okay because I feel like I would deliver maybe the highest quality product, if not, you know, just one of the highest quality products in the area because I have so much experience and I've been to so many weddings. Uh, the problem with that on being on those two platforms is that Wedding Wire and The Knot are built more for budget-friendly weddings. Um, I didn't quite realize that because in my mind, I'm like, okay, here's a platform and there's going to be varying price range, right? There's going to be photographers and videographers for $850 and there's a place for that that's great. And then there's going to be videographers and photographers for three to 5000 and that's great too. There are people who can afford it and want that level of quality. Um, the problem is I just don't think those three thousand to five thousand um, dollar clients are on are on the knot and wedding right. They're just not on those platforms. Uh, they're getting more referrals, um, referrals from venues. Uh, they're searching on YouTube. They're doing different things to find their vendors. I, I just they're just not really using that. There are a few but not enough, I think, to justify the service for me. So in conclusion, when my um, contract ends in December, I will not be renewing it because I am booking a lot of weddings at that price range in, on Facebook, mostly through my website and running Google ads and YouTube ads. And if I take that same amount of money and put it to Google and YouTube ads, uh, I think I would probably have booked five to 10 weddings where I've only booked one with Wedding Wire and The Knot. So if you're just getting started, like I was in 2015, it's probably worth it. You probably will book, you know, a wedding a week at a $850 to $2,000 price range. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, don't get cocky, keep those prices low. And every year, as you raise your equipment, as you raise your experience, as you raise your customer service, you're going to slowly raise your prices. Um, once you get up to $2,800, $3,200, $4,000 for a package, you're probably going to find that the wedding wire and the knot is not for you. Really quickly, I want to touch on their customer service. It's pretty decent uh, when they're trying to sell their service and when they're trying to get in touch with you about paying for your service. I have attached different business cards to it and sometimes it would lapse or you know, I'd be like a day late or something and they would be blowing my phone up. Now, once I did talk to a service person and I said, look, I'm not booking very many weddings. I'm not booking any weddings. This is like five months in. I haven't booked any weddings and I paid you guys like a thousand bucks, right? Well, I showed her my PDF prices and the girl I was talking to kind of drew a blank, like went silent. And I could tell that my prices were too high for her platform. And I actually said to her, I said, okay, I get it. My prices are too high for your platform, right? And she was just kind of silent. And I could tell that was a yes, but she couldn't, you know, she couldn't say that because of her job. But um, that was just like a clue. That That's where I really realized that, okay, this is not for me because I am trying to raise my value, do less weddings for more money, and really provide an experience um, rather than just a quick video. So... You know, that's just a little bit of info about their customer service. I don't think it's bad by any means. Um, they do do consultations on your storefront and your website and all that. And I didn't get much of a consultation because they looked at all that and said, looks great. Good luck. You know, I mean, they're only going to really put your, their opinion in when it's bad. So, yeah, that that's the customer service. Now, my experience back in 2015, 
with the actual website of Wedding Wire, it was just Wedding Wire at the time, was really good and I think worth it, not for the leads, for the resources. They used to have these webinars on there where it would be an expert, uh, whether it's a videographer or a venue owner or something, almost like early day podcast, and they would talk for an hour about, you know, how to get clients, how to uh, raise your conversion rate, how to raise your sales, whatever. And for the money I was paying back then, probably 1500 a year, that was worth it. That was worth it. Even if I didn't book one wedding, I learned so much from those webinars in the early days, and they don't have that now. So I might be able to say it's worth it for the resources that they have. I do know they have a blog, and they probably still do some of those webinars, but when I spoke to a customer service rep, they said that they're hoping to bring those back, but those were so valuable. Really? Wedding wire? If you're listening, but not, you can make a whole separate thing that is basically education. In closing, if you are just starting out or if your prices are between the $850 to $2,500 range, I think Wedding Wire in the Knot is a decent option. You probably will book plenty of weddings from it and you'll make your money back and it will be worth it. Now, I do think that you should invest in your own marketing strategies such as email marketing, SEO for your website, YouTube, Facebook is really good. I book a lot of weddings through Facebook. But like I said, it's not bad for the lower priced um, services. Now, if you're more experienced and you're trying to sell a higher price tag product, just don't sign up. They don't even have the resources anymore. I would say maybe it's worth it for that educational side of things, but they don't have it anymore. They said they might bring it back, but you can find all of that on this YouTube channel. So really no need to sign up for it. Um, yeah, I would stay away from it if, if you're in that upper echelon. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, please like and subscribe. It'll really help me out. We have this really low bar right now of trying to reach 100 subscribers. I think we can do it with this video and maybe the next few. Um, if you're into creative content such as videography, photography, how to build a video and photography business, make it profitable, make sure you subscribe because I've got so much knowledge from the last 10 years that I'm literally... I've got this long list of videos that I have to make on how I've been able to sustain a business and a lifestyle and, you know, feed my family. It's just, it's been great. And I'm finally getting around to sharing this information. I've also got a few courses that I'm building right now. One is on how to shoot a low budget music video and make money. So be on the lookout for that. And I really appreciate it. Peace.